Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our mining series. And after looking back at what I've done so far and also the requests you guys have made for the series, I'm going to take a different approach than I did before. I'm going to leave the old videos up in case there's something from that that you want to use. But going forward, I'm going to do things a little bit different than the way we had it before. So what we're going to start on in this video is something that was requested a lot, and that was giving the rock a health GUI. So whenever the player mines this rock here, every time they hit the part, the health GUI goes down a little bit. And then once it gets fully depleted, the rock destroys. All right, so that's what we're going to work on in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on making the tool. You can either get one from the toolbox if you want to, or you can design your own. If you get one from the toolbox, I would clear out everything except for the part named handle. And if you're going to make your own and it's going to be composed of different parts, then go ahead and group all those parts using the union button under the model tab. When you're done, you should just have the tool itself, along with either a single part or a union part that's named handle. These other parts we're going to add later on, so don't worry about those for now. Okay, after that, you can either leave the tool in the workspace or put it in the starter pack. Next, let's go ahead and work on the rock. For now, I'm not going to be too concerned on how the rock looks. So for now, let's just go ahead and insert a part into the game. Go ahead and resize it to whatever shape you want. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, let's just use the size property of this part. And let's make it 4 by 4 by 4. So we're going to do 4, comma 4, comma 4. Okay, there we go. So we have a nice little cube here. What we're going to do next is we're going to rename this part to rock. The next thing we're going to do is insert a buildboard GUI. And then inside the buildboard GUI, we're going to be adding a text label. Okay, next we're going to be changing some of the properties for the buildboard GUI. The first thing we're going to do is select the box that says always on top. And then for this part right here, we're going to change the second number to 2. So it should be 0, 2, 0. And there we go. And you can adjust the height if you want to. So if that looks a little bit too high to you, you can try something like maybe 1.5. Okay, and that's a little bit closer to the rock. But you're welcome to choose whatever number you want to. The next thing we're going to change is we're going to change max distance to 25. So what this is going to do, if you get more than 25 studs away from the rock, it's going to hide the billboard GUI. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the size of it. So we're going to scroll down to the size section. For the number that's 200, we're going to change that to 100. And then for the other part where there's a 50, we're going to change that to 25. Next, we're going to be changing some of the properties for the text label. The first thing we're going to do is rename it to green. The name of it doesn't really matter, so if you choose something different, that's fine. Just make sure you update it in the script. Okay, so some of the things we're going to change with this label is we're going to start by changing the size to match the billboard GUI. So if we scroll down to the size section, we're going to change that to 100 for the first part, and then 25 for the second part. Okay, we're not going to have any text for this, so down under the text section, we're just going to leave that blank. We're going to change the background color of this GUI to green. So if we scroll up to the background color section, we're going to click on this and then change it to the color green. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is insert another text label into the GUI. This one we're going to rename to black. And this will be the background color. We're going to resize this one. So here for the background color, we're going to change this to black. And then down for the size section, we're going to do the same numbers. So 100 and then 25. And then down for the text section, we're going to leave that blank like we did before. And then we can see that the black is on top of the green, but we want to reverse that. So to fix that, what we're going to do is for the Z index, we're going to change this to 0. Okay, so now we have the green one on top of the black one like we want. All right, so let's just go into the game at this point and see how everything looks. Okay, so we have our little GUI here. If I get more than 25 studs away from the rock, then it goes away. And as soon as I get back in range, then it appears again. This can be adjusted if you want to. So if you want it to show up farther away, then you would just increase the range. So let's say for this rock here, we want it to show up farther away. Then for the billboard GUI, instead of 25, let's try something like maybe 50. Okay, so now if I start to walk away, we can see that the one on the left goes away, but this one is still there. And this one doesn't go away until I get about this far away. So just depending on how far away you want it to show, you can adjust that range there. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is a script for the tool. 
So wherever you have it, go ahead and locate your tool. And then for this tool here, we're going to be adding two different things. Go ahead and start by adding a script onto the tool. And the other thing that we want to add into this tool is a bool value. So you can add that by just clicking on the plus sign, search for bool value, and then click on that. Once you insert it, you're going to rename it to mining. And then you just want to make sure that for the value section, it's unchecked. Okay, once you have that, go and open up the script for this tool. Okay, inside the script, we're going to start with a reference for the tool itself. So we'll say local tool is going to be equal to script dot parent. And then we're going to write a function for whenever the tool gets activated. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can be something like mine. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying local string. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, it's going to be string value. So if you watch the other mining video, this is going to be very similar to what we did before. After that, we're going to say str for string dot name. And the name of it, we're going to put in quotation marks. And inside the quotation marks, we're going to say tool. And then anim for animation. Next, we're going to say string dot value. And this is going to be equal to slash. So this is one of the default built-in animations that we can just use quickly and easily. Next, we're going to say string dot parent. And this is going to be equal to tool. After that, we're going to say tool dot mining. So we're talking about this bool value we created over here. And we're going to set its value equal to true. We're going to wait for a quarter of a second. So we're going to say 0 0.25. And then after that, we're going to take the same thing. But this time, we're going to set it equal to false. The reason we're doing this section here is because later on, when we're writing the script for the rock, it's going to be helpful to have a value that we can access to see if the tool was activated or not. OK, so the final thing we have to do for this script is down at the bottom, we're going to say tool dot activated. And then we're going to say colon connect. And then the function that we want to run is called mine. OK, so that's all we have to do for the tool. So let's go ahead and run the code, and we can check it out. OK, so now whenever I click the mouse to activate the tool, we have a little animation playing. And then we can see on the right-hand side over here for the value section, it turns on for a quarter of a second and then turns off. And it seems to match pretty well. So when the tool goes down and by the time it gets back up, the value is turned off again. OK, so now let's move on to the next part so that when our tool hits the rock, it does something with the GUI. To do that, we're going to be adding a script into our rock. Don't worry about the sound for now. We're going to do that in just a little bit. OK, so the first thing we're going to do in this script is we're going to say local rock. It's going to be equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to create a variable for the billboard GUI. So we're going to say local label is going to be equal to rock dot billboard GUI. And if you want to, you can rename the billboard GUI to health. And that's probably what I'm going to do just to make sure there's no confusion. And then after that, instead of billboard GUI, it's going to be health. Next, we're going to be defining a variable that will keep track of how many hits the rock has left. So just like I did in the other video, we're going to say local, and then swings left. And I'm going to set that equal to 10. So this will be how many hits the rock can take before it gets destroyed. After that, we're going to work on a function. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can be something like onTouch. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part. Then inside this function, we're going to check to see if a tool hit this rock. So we'll say local tool is going to be equal to other part dot parent. So if our pickaxe hits the rock, then other part will be the handle inside of the tool. And then by saying dot parent, we're going to get the tool itself. And then just as a check, we want to make sure that this object is actually a tool. So we're going to say if tool and then colon is a. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to make sure it's a tool. And the other thing that we're going to be checking for is to make sure that the mining value is equal to true. So what I mean by that is inside the tool, we created a value called mining. And we want to make sure that that value is equal to true when we hit the rock. So to do that, we're going to say tool dot mining dot value. And we're going to make sure that's equal to true. Then what we're going to do inside the statement is we're going to subtract 1 from the swings left. So we're going to say swings left minus equals 1. So that'll subtract 1 from it. And then we want to change the size of the green text label. And we can do that by starting with the label. So this is our billboard GUI. 
And then inside that, we want to adjust the green part. And then we want to change its size. So I'm going to say dot size. And this is going to be equal to udim 2. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put swings left divided by 10. So this is going to convert this number into a decimal, which we can use kind of like a percentage. So when swings left is equal to 10, it's going to be 10 divided by 10, which is going to be equal to 1. So you can think of that like 100%. So the whole green bar will be showing. Once it gets down to 9, then it's going to be 9 divided by 10, which will be 0.9. And you can think of that like 90%. So we're going to make it where 90% of the green bar is showing. And as you get closer and closer to 0, we're going to have less and less of the green bar showing. Okay, the next part is going to be the x offset, so that's going to be equal to 0. The next part is going to be the y percentage, so we're going to keep that as 100%, so it's going to be the full height. And then finally, we're going to set the y offset equal to 0. Okay, and the last thing that we need to check for is when this value gets down to 0, we want to destroy the rock. So we can do that by saying if swings left, and I'm going to say less than or equal to 0, just in case there's some glitch and it goes below 0, this part will still work. So if that happens, then what we're going to do is we're going to say rock, colon, and destroy. Okay, down here at the bottom, we're going to connect this to a touch event. So we're going to say rock dot touch colon connect. And then inside this function, we're going to say on touch. All right, so let's go and try this out and make sure it's working. Okay, so I'm going to try this rock here, which is the one we just wrote the script for. Okay, and it doesn't appear to be working, so let's go and check out the output. Okay, so we have a mistake on this line right here. So for udim2, it should be dot new, just like we do for vector3s. All right, so let's go and rerun it and make sure this part's working again. Okay, and now whenever the tool touches the rock, the GUI gets smaller and smaller. Okay, once it goes down to zero, then the rock disappears just like we expected. So the last thing we're going to do before we end with this video is just add a sound to it. Okay, so for the sounds, you can get those from the toolbox. Under the audio section, if you search for something like pickaxe, there are some different sounds that you can choose from. I chose this one right here. And what you can do to insert it into your rock is just click on the rock and then click on the sound and it should insert it inside of the rock. What we're going to do is we're going to rename it from whatever sound it has to hit. Okay, after that we can head back to the script for the rock. And then up here at the top we're going to make a variable for the sound. So we'll say local hit underscore sound and this is going to be equal to rock dot hit. So if you choose a different name for your sound, make sure you update that right here. Okay, and after we have the variable for the sound, we're going to head into our function here. And right inside the first if statement, what we're going to do is we're going to say hit underscore sound colon and play. And then after play, just make sure we have our parentheses. Okay, so let's go and run the game and make sure this part's working. Okay, so I'm going to go over to this rock and mine it. Okay, and hopefully you can hear the sound playing. And then like before, once we get to 10 hits, the rock disappears. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I apologize if it seems like we're restarting the series, but I think moving forward, it's going to be much easier to do it this way. So I hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for the next one.